In the previous video, we began to create our own custom app here in Podio. I told you that I would be creating a project app to keep all of the projects within my organizations, so we gave it a name and we associated an icon with it. Now it's time to actually start adding the fields that are going to be part of this app. So you'll notice that all of our options are over here here on the left and we're going to go through pretty much all of these options so we can see how they're beneficial and in what situations we should use a particular field. And you'll notice that on the right Podio has already entered an initial field for us and that is this title field. Now if you don't necessarily need a title for each item in this app you could remove this field completely or you could change the name of it. Maybe it's project title. So I could go ahead and I could type in project title. You notice that for this particular field, we have the option of selecting a single line of text or a large text area. For a project title, I think a single line of text will be enough, but later on we're going to add a project description, in which case we'll choose a large area of text. You'll notice that each of these fields on the left comes with a field for explanatory text. This is where we can enter text that will help the user who's adding an item to the app understand what type of information they need to enter in this particular field. At the same time, we also have the option of making this field required, and as a project title is pretty important to my organization, I'm going to require this field. Moving down our list over here on the left, I want to make sure that every project has an owner associated with it. So I'm going to drag this contact field over so that I can link this project specifically with a contact in my Podio account. I could just use a text field for the name of the owner, but it wouldn't link anywhere. It wouldn't be connected. So you'll see for the contact field, I can choose whether I want to allow workspace members or just contacts within the workspace. So that might not be people who specifically have access to Podio, but they might be added as a contact. You'll also notice that we have the option to share this item with other contacts and email addresses added to the field, which means you could create an app for meetings. And if you're going to invite people outside of your organization by email address in this checkbox is checked, they'll get a notification about this item and they'll be able to view it so they could see the meeting notes and that sort of thing. Again, we can choose whether or not this field is required. Moving down our list, I'm going to now use the category field. This field can be used for a number of different things and I'm going to move it over here to the right. For my projects app, I can go ahead and I can choose a, a category for my project. Maybe this is a marketing project or a sales project. But at the same time, I can also modify this field and in which case I'm going to do so. I'm not going to have it be a particular category, but I'm going to have it be the project status. And I'm doing this so that you can see how you can be creative when creating apps here in Podio. So if it's a project status field, I get to choose different categories. So I could choose not started as one category, and I'm just going to hit enter to enter that field. I could choose research. Maybe the project hasn't been started, we're still researching it. I could also add in progress, and then I could say completed. So I have four different status fields for my project. Now you'll notice down here, I can specify whether a user can choose only one of these categories at once or multiple. In this case, for my project status, my project can't be not started and in progress at the same time, so I'm going to leave this as only one choice. It can only be one of these statuses at once. However, if you were using, say, tags, maybe you had a project that was both marketing and sales related, you could have marketing as one of the choices, sales as another choice, and you could allow your users to select multiple choices. Again, explanatory text and whether or not this field should be required, in which case I'm going to make it required. Moving down our list, we have a date field. So we could go ahead and we could enter this date field to put in the due date. When is this project due by? Do we want this date added to the calendar? Absolutely. I mentioned earlier in this video series that when you add dates to items within an app, it will automatically be added to your Podio calendar. In order to do that, you need to have this box checkmarked, in which case we want it so that we can look at our calendar and see when our projects are due. And I'm also going to make this required. The link field is just so you could enter a web address. So if there was a web address associated with this project, I could enter it here and that website would show up as a preview when I view this record in my app. Same goes for image. If you had an image associated with this particular project, you could go ahead and upload it. It could be like a JPEG or a GIF, GIF file, however you pronounce it. 
Moving down, we have the Google Maps field. And this is where I explained earlier in the video series that if you enter an address, it will show up in Google Maps. So we could go ahead and we could include this field. And then when somebody fills out this item after we've created the app, it will automatically show the location on Google Maps. We could also enter a question field. Now this is very similar to the category field because with category, if you take a look up here where we added it in the project status, we can basically ask a question here. What is the project status? And then the user can choose. Now at the same time, we could also use, I'm going to shrink this project status field, we could also use the question field, which is going to look pretty similar. We can put in the different answers here. So I could say, I'll name the question, what is the project status? Again, we probably don't need to repeat these two fields. One of them is going to be enough, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you. And then we could go ahead and we could type in our answers. So they would be not started and so forth. Now, the reason that you might use this question field instead of the category field is because we can actually turn these apps into forms for external users to fill out. So if we have a client or a vendor that we want to fill out a form so that the data is automatically submitted here into Podio, we would want to use the question field because it's just going to look a little bit more like a survey when the user fills it out. Now for your internal employees, the category field should be fine. So it really is up to you. I'm going to shrink this field now. And we're going to go down here to the number field. This is a pretty simple field, but it can be very important. You'll notice when I move it over, all this is going to show up when we finish creating our app is a place to enter numbers. And you might say, well, can't we just use the text field to enter numbers? And you absolutely can. In fact, when you're entering a phone number, you do want to use the text field. But if you want to enter a number that a calculation can be done on that we can divide by or subtract by or multiply, you need to enter it as a number field. In this particular situation, I don't have much of a reason to have a number field in this app, so I'm not going to include it. But just be aware that that's an option, and again, if you're going to do a calculation on a particular field, you're going to need this number field. So I'm just going to remove it for now because we don't need it. There's also a field for money. So if I move this over here, you'll see that I can choose which currency I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to choose the US dollar and I can name my field. So money isn't really explanatory. What is the user supposed to enter here? I want to know what the cost of this project is going to be. So when a user fills out a particular item in this app, they can enter the cost of the project. And this is pretty important for me as a project manager. I'm going to require this question. Moving down our list, I also want to know how long this project will take. And this is going to be important because if you look down our list, we have this field called calculation. So at the end here, we're going to add this calculation field and we're going to divide the cost of the project by the duration so we can see how much this costs per hour for us. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the duration field. Let me shrink the cost field first. I'm going to add the duration field over here on the right. And we're going to say, how long will this project take? And we're going to require this as well. Moving down our list over here on the left, we have the progress slider field. We saw this field earlier on when we were looking at a already created app here in Podio. But this is basically a slider where the user can choose on a scale from 0 to 100. So if I move this over here, oops, I need to shrink this duration field first. If I move the project slider field over here, you'll notice that we can call this whatever we want. So I'm going to say for this example, project completion percentage. So that as this project is being completed, the user can specify whether it's 20% completed, 40% completed, or so forth. And I'm also going to require this field. Now we get to use our calculation. So I'm going to move this calculation field over here to the right. And again, I need to shrink this slider field first. When I move the calculation field over here, this is probably the most complicated field that you can add when building your own app here in Podio, but it's also one of the most useful fields because we can actually do calculations on some of our other fields. And I mentioned earlier, I want to know how much this project is going to cost me per hour. And I'm already going to have the total cost, and I'm going to have the specified time that it's going to take. So in my calculation field, I need to enter my first field 
that I want to be part of this calculation. But you'll notice that when I click on this drop down, I'm not seeing anything in the list. I'm not seeing my cost field and I'm not seeing my duration field. Now these are both fields that we can do a calculation on, but we haven't saved this app yet. So in order for these fields to be displayed, we actually have to save this app real quick and they'll show up down here in the calculation field. So I'm just going to scroll to the bottom and I'm going to hit save app. And actually, it's, going to, it's asking us to enter some numbers here in the calculation field. And I'm kind of glad this came up during the video because this is something that you might experience. So in order to do this properly, we actually need to remove this calculation field. And we'll delete it right out of there. Now we need to save our app so that the duration and the cost fields are saved in our app. So I'm going to click Save. And now I need to go back and I need to modify this app because I'm not done creating it yet. So you'll notice that I'm in the project app. It's actually created, but I know that I haven't finished all of the work that needs to be done. So I'm going to go over here to the right, I'm going to click on the wrench, and I'm going to click on Modify App. So it'll take me back into the App Builder, and I can scroll down to where I was. Now you'll notice when I add this calculation field, and I go to select my initial field to do a calculation on, I have a number of other fields available because we've now saved this app. So the first field that I want to use is the Cost field. And then I mentioned that we're going to divide this by the amount of hours. So I'm going to select my operator, which is divide. And then I'm going to select my second field, which is how long will this project take? So this calculation is going to do cost divided by how long it will take to get our cost per hour. So I can specify down here at the bottom that this is cost per hour. And then the last field we have over here on the left is our app reference field. If I move that over, I have to shrink this calculation field first. If I move the app reference field over, this is another very, very useful field that we can use here in Podio. This is where we can make a connection to another app within our Podio account and within this workspace. So in this particular scenario, we've already, we already have our sales app, our sales workspace, and within our sales workspace, we have our clients and leads app. Well, let's say that every project I have with my organization needs to be linked to a particular client. What I can do is I'm going to change the name of this app reference and I'm going to change it to client. Now, Podio is telling me I can choose an app to reference. So if I go down here, you'll notice that this list auto populates and I can go ahead and I can select my leads and clients app within my sales workspace. I'm going to be careful not to select the leads and clients app within my demo workspace because that's in a whole nother workspace. So I select the leads and clients within the sales app and you'll notice that I could actually add multiple references in here. So maybe I do have different leads and clients within my demo workspace but they might also be associated with a project. I could add both of these fields. In this case I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it simple and I'm just going to link the leads and clients fields within the sales workspace. So when we go to fill out an item in this app, when we get down here to the client field, we'll actually see a drop down of all of our clients that are in the leads and clients app. And this is where the power of Podio really starts to show, is when we start doing calculations on our fields and we start linking all of our apps together. Again, I could require this explanatory text. So that should be a pretty good overview of what all of these fields on the left over here can do for us when building a custom app. Now remember, we can also go in and modify already created apps. And when you do that, you're going to have all of these same options. So stay tuned for the next videos in this section of the series as we finish creating this app and fill it out to see what it looks like once it's completed.